Welcome to an iGET concept module. This concept module is part two of a two-part concept module. iGET is a National Science Foundation funded project to promote remote sensing education. Part two is going to look at some more advanced level topics on going from digital to number to top of reflectance for and correcting for Earth-Sun geometry. Part 1 contained basic information about solar irradiance and reflectance. It included uh, comments and concepts about Earth-Sun geometry, its orbit and tilt, and talked about the brightness to digital numbers. Part 2 will have a short review of the more important details, but it will introduce equations for correcting the imagery for differences in solar irradiance energy. And we're going to be uh, showing how to use ArcGIS Desktop to correct those for Landsat 5 and 7 and for Landsat 8. But I'll also include links to more resources, including a step-by-step -step exercise how to carry out those equations. Also, links to USGS and NASA are included. Landsat is a passive remote sensing system and needs an energy source to capture reflectance data. The sun provides that energy, and sensors collect the reflected top of atmosphere wavelengths, and we're going to be talking about those reflected wavelengths. To visualize those reflected wavelengths, the data is converted to a scaled digital number and displayed as brightness for each pixel in shades of gray. This is an example of Landsat 5 and its band 4. Scaling of the digital numbers for different Landsat missions are different. Why do we want to compare Landsat data collected on different dates? Well, digital numbers are based on the solar irradiance energy on the date of collection. The Earth-Sun geometry affects how much solar irradiance energy is available. This includes the distance of the Earth to the Sun, as well as the angle of the Earth's tilt. This uh, little diagram just shows our elliptic orbit and the sun's rays and the tilt. Well, why correct, correct Landsat imagery? Well, digital numbers between images can be due to energy differences resulting from that different Earth-Sun geometry. So that the digital number differences, you really want them to be due to changes in reflection reflectance of the objects that you're uh, observing, and not the amount of solar energy. Software can be used to make these corrections. Methods and equations to make them may be different for different Landsat missions. This uh, converting digital numbers to this top of uh, atmosphere reflectance is a two-step process. The first step is to take those scaled digital numbers and return them to have values that are uh, energy, so we're going to be talking about watts per meter. In step two, you take the new energy uh, related values from step one and account for the difference of solar irradiance due to the geometry of the Earth. These are the two equations and the two steps that need to be made to correct Landsat 5 and 7 bands. Step one changes that di digital number to radiance values. And you have to do it for each of the wavelengths that you want to use in your study. The uh, variables for this equation are actually in the metadata file for each scene. So when you download your data, you will get an MTF uh, file. Make sure you save that. You can open it in um, Word note and um, view the, the variable values for this equation. Step two, you're going to look at the radiance values you calculated in step one and use another, another equation that accounts for the Earth's orbit, the distance between the Earth and the uh, Sun, as well as the angle of tilt of the Earth's axis on the day you collected the information. This is a rather uh, complex uh, step. And you can find an exercise on the iGET webpage, that's igotget.delmar.edu, that has an exercise that walks you through each of the steps and why you're doing it. If you go to the webpage, just scroll down under the topic Disaster Management Wildflowers, 
and you'll see the um, exercise is named classifying wildfires in southwestern United States and it's actually in the second part of that exercise. The first equation uh, to illustrate to go from those digital numbers to radiance here is uh, just a, a, a metadata file example. This is where you can find the, the data for each of those different variables. This is ArcGIS raster calculator tool. So the equation may look a little daunting, but once you get all of the variables from your metadata file, you put it into the um, raster calculator tool at that location I'm showing, and it calculates those values for you. It creates a new um, for each wavelength. You can then use raster calculator again with a second equation, a radiance. Um, you do have to go out and find some of the data from other sources. So you have to find the distance between the Earth and the Sun on the Julian day of the data the day it was collected. You also have to find um, a value from a table and it's in the Landsat Handbook you'll find in the reference section. Also you'll look at the solar zenith angle and radians. Uh, this value is 90 degrees minus the elevation of the sun and you're going to find the elevation of the sun in your metadata file. You're going to also have to convert that from degrees to uh, radians. Some terms uh, solar zenith angle. The zenith is just the location directly overhead from the location that you're at at noon. The angle, the solar zenith angle, is the angle between that zenith and the elevation of the sun measured up from the same location's horizon. Landsat 8 wavelength band correction is a little bit different. You can go to this link at USGS and it will have the equations and how to um, use them. But here's an example. The first equation, we're going the same way. We have to take the digital numbers and we take it to top of atmosphere's reflectance with uh, values for energy. Note again that the values are in the metadata file that you need and you have to do it for each of the wavelengths that you're going to want to be correcting. Equation 2 corrects for the sun angle. Here you're going to be using that zenith angle again and you can use raster calculator that will help you uh, input all of the values you find. Why do you want to make these corrections? Well, um, the solar irradiance energy is different and if you're going to be looking at land use changes over time and you're going to be looking at imagery from different dates, you're going to want to correct that data so that you're comparing the reflectance value and not the difference in solar energy. Same thing for pre and post events such as before fires, after national, natural or man-made disasters. So two different images taken on different days. Also, uh, most projects you'll find you want to mosaic more than one image together. So you'll be collecting data from different paths and rows on different dates and you want to make sure that they're, they're the same values. Also, just know that you're going to need software, uh, the equations, and the information in the metadata file can may be used these. Now, it may be different. Uh, different programs have protocols and exactly how you do this, but they should be available. Here's some questions, and you can find the answers to these questions at I Get, I Get website. Give you a moment to look at them, or you can pause the video. These are the references that I mentioned earlier, how to find the Julian day, the distance between the sun and the earth on the Julian day, also the equations for Landsat, the step-by-step -step exercise, and also how to use Envy to make these same kind of corrections. Thank you.